Well, hi, and, and welcome to my shop here on December 22nd. Oh my gosh, so close to Christmas now. Um, yesterday I did not do a video. I took the day off to do other stuff. <clears throat> but I'm in here again to carry on. The last video, although it was a bit of a struggle, it became pretty clear that the speaker is not the source of distortion. And there certainly is a distorted sound when you're listening to the radio on this uh, little guy. So... Um, there's still lots of bad capacitors in there that need to be changed. So I think it might be interesting to try to take an approach to try to hit the capacitor that's causing the distortion. And it may be not a capacitor. It may be two or three of them in combination. I don't really know. So why don't we start by taking a look at the... Uh, and maybe I could do some elimination. I can say, well, this capacitor, this is not going to cause distortion. And change it and see what happens. So... Uh, that's the approach I want to take. Probably as soon as I get going, everything will change. That's usually what happens. So, but let's take a look at the schematic and see if we can't identify either one for sure that can't cause distortion or one that we think will cause distortion in the radio. Okay, now, um, maybe a suspicious capacitor might be this one right here. And this one's connecting the plate back around to the cathode pretty sure its job is to just get rid of any RF that's made it all the way to this point in the radio if if it's not working right uh, like for instance if its capacity is gone I'm really not sure what the consequences are in terms of the sound coming out of the speaker if, if you don't have this capacitor and if it's a very leaky one because it is under pressure it's got 100 volts on it what would happen if you leaked back some positive voltage? Well, I tested this voltage here um, after changing this capacitor, and, or this capacitor and this resistor, and I got this exactly right, 5.8 volts. Hard to believe it's being pushed there by some leak from here. But this is in the audio circuits, so something is causing it to be distorted. You know, another good possibility is it's one of these tubes that's doing that, too. But we're doing capacitors right now, so let's carry on with that. So here's one. Maybe if I change this, the distortion will go away. There's only a few left in here. Let me just look under the radio for a moment. One, two, three, four. Four of them. There's four tubular capacitors. So with it, have a T in front of them, like this one. One there. Uh, so some, most of these, some of these I've changed. There's one here I haven't done anything with. There's one here I haven't done anything with. That's one, two, three. And the fourth one is somewhere, somewhere in this radio. Here. Now what's this guy doing? It's connected uh, across the line. Well, it could be intercepting noise coming in on the power cord. Um, I'm not sure what to say about this one. Could, could, could this cause distortion? I don't think so offhand. The most likely one has to be this guy. Won't be this one. This one's just, this is like a safety capacitor. It's connected to the ground side of the phono jack. And that, you know, the ground side of the phono jack is something people can touch. It sticks out the back of the radio. You can really touch it. If it were tied directly to this B minus, and then an unpolarized plug was put in the outlet in just the wrong way, you'd have 120 volts here. You'd have 120 volts sticking out the back of that radio on this. So with this in place and working properly, I think you could give yourself a shock if you were grounded in some way. Um, but it would be mild. Uh, I just can't see how this can do anything. This is an open circuit right now. This guy... It's the ABC. I, I did this one. I've done this one. Didn't I? Didn't I do that? I don't have it marked on my sheet as having done it. 
well, I, I, I can't remember. Maybe I didn't do this one. This guy could cause problems, I think. Well, I, I know I did this. I did, I did a whole video doing this one capacitor. I just didn't mark it on the sheet, so he's changed. And obviously it wasn't responsible for the distortion, it's still there. And it's this one. How would this cause distortion? Hard to see offhand, but you know, maybe there's factors here. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly there are factors here I don't know about. Well, let's experiment. Let's start with this one. We'll change this capacitor out and, uh, and see if the uh, distortion in the radio goes away. Got to find that capacitor. It's going to be pretty easy to find. It should be uh, kind of right off the plate of the 50B5. 50B5 is right here. Well, that's got to be it. 0 0.02. 0 0.02. This has got to be it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this out, and then we're going to play the radio and see if the uh, sound is better. Why don't we just start, I'll cut them right out and we'll put them to the test right away. And I'm leaving tails so I, I don't lose track of where this capacitor came from. How's it look? All the capacitors in here have looked kind of dried out on the, on the surface of the capacitor and uh, look well sealed around these edges anymore. Who? Well, doesn't look good, but it looks sealed. Well, let's give it a go. So let me just say a little bit about video making. Uh, if you're not doing this kind of work, I mean, making videos, if you're not making videos to put on YouTube, and if you are and you haven't got an awful lot of subscribers yet, you're going to reach a point where you begin to get invitations from commercial operations to put their advertisements on your YouTube channel. I get an email almost one a day now from all sorts of companies. Uh, many of them have nothing to do with the topic of my YouTube channel. They always start out with, we like what you're doing on your YouTube channel. And I think, no you don't, you have no clue. It's just some mass email that's gone out. I've been invited by Nike. I've been invited by auto parts stores, uh, clothing stores, cl clothing operations, retailers, all kinds of stuff. I get an email a day, practically. And what they, they are right up front. We'll send you our ad, you put it in your video, we'll pay you. Um, there's a lot of pressure to do that. My normal YouTube earnings are rather paltry. I, I mean, I've got a kind of a backwater channel here. Um, and uh, it's, you know, there's not a lot of money coming in. That doesn't really matter to me. If, if it did, uh, things would look a lot different on my channel. I would do things a lot differently. In particular, the uh, thumbnails would have a picture of me, you know, with a wild expression you know, like this. I'd have some useless part with a red circle around it as if there's something important there and I come up with a title, well, I do come up with titles that are a little bit provocative, but kind of on a joking level instead, I come up with video, with uh, titles that are uh, intensely uh, provocative, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not doing any of those things, but you can see an awful lot of what were once simple video makers have, have gone over to the commercial side, you know, maybe because they're intent on earning money making YouTube videos. I'm, I'm not really intent on doing that. I see myself as kind of doing a service here, although I think some would say it's a disservice. <laughs> Depends how you look at it. So, uh, no fancy stuff coming here. I decided I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, by the way, if people have products or uh, talk about products in their videos, uh, those products are being sent to them for free. And there's a lot of video makers, especially in the area of uh, technology, um, you can think of a ham radio guys who have got relationships now where things set up so much that they are being sent thousands of dollars worth of equipment and they're motivated to do that and that's the reason why they do YouTube videos to get that equipment and, and do reviews and stuff like that on it 
Um, I feel sorry for them because after a while the tail is wagging the dog without a doubt. Plus, you know, if you're making money, enough money on YouTube videos that it's a significant portion of your income, then things are going to change for you. You're going to become desperate if you, to, you know, push up your viewers and all that kind of stuff. I say to any other video maker, so perhaps I stand a little bit alone here with my uh, rather small following. Uh, that's fine. I, I think that's great. Okay, let's carry on here. Enough of that talk. Um, watch the eye. 50 volts, what do you do? You're a leaker. So, no surprise, all the capacitors are testing the same in this radio. They're all leaky, and they're all testing like just about all radios of this vintage do. I've had the odd one that has had capacitors that actually test really quite, quite good, even though they're as old as this radio. There, there's the odd one out there. Must have lived a charmed life in some way. Okay, so I'm gonna put this nice new shiny yellow capacitor in there. I'll have to solder it now and we'll see what happens. Maybe while I'm soldering this I'll talk just a little more. You know, So how did I get into making videos? Uh, honestly, completely by accident. The first three or four videos I posted on my YouTube channel I didn't realize were getting posted on it. I thought to myself, well, I'm fixing people's radios. Can I come up with some way for them to sort of click in and see how I'm doing on their radio? Some kind of live thing. So I found out about Hangouts uh, and Google Hangouts. And I went ahead and started experimenting and quickly was able to make terrible but live Hangout videos of me doing this. Not long, 10 minutes, 15 minutes terrible quality. I didn't know, but they were being posted on my YouTube channel automatically. I didn't even know I had a YouTube channel. Um, once I, I found this stuff out, I realized what was going on, I already had a couple of regular viewers. Just a couple. One in particular, a uh, person he posts videos to, uh, goes by the name Bobby Tectalibus. Well, Mr. Tectalibus, which I don't think is his real name, I think it's a complicated story behind that name, which I don't really understand or know. Well, this individual encouraged me so strongly to continue that uh, I did. I said, okay, these are going on YouTube. Okay, I'll look into that. So I learned about the whole YouTube thing, how to post videos, and then I started building up hardware and software to enable all this. It took a long time. For me to iron everything out, get everything working. This is about 10, 10 or more years ago. And uh, that's really how this started. It wasn't like I sat down one day and said, oh, I'm going to become a YouTube video maker. Not at all. I stumbled right into it. And, you know, I've had lots of... Uh, uh, encouragement from lots of people who appreciate what I'm trying to do here. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to fix radios so that they'll have a, a longer life in this world. So the world will have more of these radios around down the road. Now, I'm just one guy. The interesting thing about making these videos is, and I hope this is what's happening, it's encouraging people who you know, don't have a shop like mine, don't have all the parts around, but have this radio and a desire to try to get it going to take it on, to, to, to watch my videos and see how I stumble my way through and to, to try to do the same so that their radio will live on into the future. And uh, maybe if they get through one, maybe they'll think about doing another and another. Maybe they'll find out that today you can get quite a bit of really excellent equipment in your hands for very little money. Not this old stuff. But new stuff, dirt cheap. Um, so, I mean, there's lots of potential here for many, many people to be doing this. They get the information you need and all that kind of stuff. Parts are just, you know, like everything, just order it and it drops in your mailbox a short while later. Everything is possible. So I hope what's happening is I'm encouraging people to try this, particularly if they're worried they don't know what they're doing. I hope I stand as a model of how somebody who doesn't know what they're doing at times 
can continue on and successfully get, get through this stuff. That, that's what I hope. Um, not showing anybody the right way to do anything. I think a lot of people would agree with that. <laughs> I'm just showing you my way. And, uh, you know, uh, okay, so we got the capacitor in there. Uh, I'm talking too much today. Let's turn this guy over and shake anything out of it. Will it still be distorted? Now, the distortion's a little subtle. I had, I, uh, I had an opportunity a few days ago uh, with the power out at my house while the hydro crews uh, took a large tree off the primary wire behind my house. The power was out for about a half an hour. During that half an hour, I got a chance to try out a, a, just an AM radio, just a broadcast band radio. I didn't really... Yeah, I ran out of time. And they, got, they had the power back on in about a half hour. Oh my gosh, what a world of difference. Uh, I won't go into it in detail, but let's just say with the power off, I was picking up 10, 12, 14 stations across the AM band in the middle of the afternoon. Today, when I go to operate this radio, I'm lucky if I can pick up one station at 590. You know, the troublemaker is the computer that's in my shop, but I discover that the main troublemaker in my house is another computer, the one that's on the other side of the house in my uh, my office, my listening post, my whatever you want to call it, man cave. That computer fills my house with noise from top to bottom. Man alive. What a lesson. So I'm hot on the trail of trying to solve this. <laughs> no, not hot on the trail. I hope I can reduce or, or, or somehow improve the noise situation here now that I really kind of uh, understand the obvious. Computers, bad. Computer screens, bad, 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 bad. Stop talking. Get this radio going. Get something happening here. <clears throat> I guess I'm just in the mood to talk. Maybe it's because I didn't do a video yesterday. Okay, is everything ready? We are ready. Put your money down. Do you think it's going to sound clear or not? Okay. I don't. I think it's going to sound the same. That's my guess. Come on. Slow poke. So in my ear, that sounds exactly the same as it did. It's the same distortion. It really does sound like a scratchy voice coil. Although I think that's not the case. Okay, do some more capacitors, I guess. Because we haven't found it yet. Okay, just turn the power off. I'm going to pick the next capacitor here. Okay, there's three capacitors left in there. Just give me a pointer. <coughs> So this one is the capacitor that goes to the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, goes to the uh, uh, phono input on the back. It's grounded right here. This capacitor is grounded in the same place. So is that yellow one, grounded right here. Grounded to the B minus. Grounded, what a terrible term. I should never use it. This one comes through, comes over to this terminal and goes out on this wire off to the Phono input, this is the phono sound input coming back here. So I guess they put this in just for the phono connection on the back. That's a 0.01, we'll change that. This one, can you see in the camera? I guess you can. It's connected down here to the uh, chassis, metal, the metal of the, of the chassis. So this is the chassis capacitor on the diagram. It's, you know, if my pencil could go there, it's right there. Uh, that's a fairly big one. We'll change that. 
The last one's over here. And this one is, if I, if I could extend my pen up, whoosh, pencil, it'd be right there. <laughs> I, just, I just tried swinging my pencil on top of the, the diagram there. And so this one's job is the one that's got me scratching my head a little bit. It's right across the power line, though. You can see the power line coming in. The power line connects right here. So does this capacitor. The other side kind of winds its way up to this terminal. And although this is on a coil, this is actually a ground point, or again, a B minus point in the radio to connect to. Um, this one might be just a wee bit different, come to think of it. No. What I was kind of reacting to was uh, this capacitor is tied to the chassis. There are other connections to the chassis. You can see on the circuit diagram over this way, there's an antenna wire going to the chassis and some other stuff right in the very, very front end of the radio. Nothing to do with this capacitor. So this one can't affect anything. This one, I don't think it can affect anything. This one, I don't think any of these can affect the distortion. So uh, if there is one that can, it would be this guy. I'll just change this one first, see what happens, and then change these last two at the same time. So this guy's gonna go. Okay, so you can see the capacitor I put in there. That's a little bit of an unusual looking one. This is a specially uh, designed capacitor intended to be in situations where uh, it's very important that the capacitor not explode. Uh, for instance, uh, installed across the power line. So if you have a you know, line coming in your radio and often there's a capacitor across it, uh, that's kind of what this one is. This is the kind of capacitor you want on it. Uh, because be, because it won't start a fire. I think that's basically the, the bottom line on that. Otherwise, it's just another capacitor. I thought I'd put one in like that. Okay, we're going to play the radio. We might as well just leave it upside down. Okay, that, that might cause the sound to be uh, inside out, but we won't worry about that. Maybe the, maybe the announcer will speak backwards. Let's see. Maybe my sick jokes will come to an end. Maybe, yeah, hey, that'd be good. Okay, gonna give it a moment. Again, I'm not very hopeful about this. Let's see. Oh, the anticipation. was loud, louder, and then it kind of went down there. Hmm. so different just because I turned it upside down let, let me turn it right side up here oh did you see that as the voltage I turned the power off as the voltage went away for a moment the sound came up did I do something wrong in here I, I can I just did this hmm how, how, how could that be a problem? This is a 0 0.05. Capacitor I took out. 0 0.05. Let's test this capacitor just before we go any further. Oh, I really can't imagine there's. any chance that this isn't anything different than the rest. Okay, here we go. 50 volts. Yeah, totally bad. Bad enough that this is at its limit. It can't show you 
if you know it can only show you bad to a certain point and beyond that they all just show the same thing the eye is closed so exactly how bad that is we don't know bad enough that's for sure what has happened to the radio it's beyond me right now why 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 would it be behaving the way it's behaving did I do something else without thinking <laughs> that happens I don't think so. I did say turning it upside down was going to change it, wasn't it? Maybe that's what happened. It sounds coming out upside down and it just sounds that way. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, more dry humor. Let's go back. Power good. Power good. I'm supplying it with... It's a little low. 109 volts. A little long. There it goes. It's not a good sign at all. Hmm. It would, would strike me that a bias is building up in the radio and that's what's quieting the radio. The AVC voltage gone wild? Huh, what's happened? There it goes again. I turn the power off and on the way down, out it comes. Something happened there. A fairly solid injection of coffee might help at this point. Okay, I think it might be interesting to look at the bias voltages in this radio. Um, and I think I'm going to watch the bias of the output tube. It's right here. By watching the voltage drop on the cathode resistor and uh, see if that is somehow implicated in this. We'll watch it while the radio warms up. That's my thinking. Oh my gosh. That's a strong clip there. Okay, I'm going to clip this right on. Get on there. Okay. So I'm going to watch this meter. You're expecting a positive voltage around about. Five, round about 5.8 volts. So, um, if the radio would be quiet, the 5.8 I think would be much larger. Um, that would generate a higher bias, it would quiet the output down, I think. And I'm not sure of that on this tube. Then after that, we'll do the same thing with the AVC at that test point between the two larger resistors. Okay, Put the radio upside down because I'm sure it doesn't really make a difference. Here we go. Gotta keep our eye on this meter. And listen. Five is about here. Wow, why so long? There it goes. It's not this voltage. This is just getting to where it should be. I've got the uh, dim bulbs in the circuit, so the Radio is running at 103, so this should be a little low. That's not what's quieting it. Okay, let me take this off. Now we'll look at the bias voltage. Um, that's a negative voltage on the junction of those two resistors. Uh, still on 15 volt scale here. What do we get? 
at right here. Hmm. So it's possible that I'm, I'm attaching the meter and it's causing the voltage to change the moment I attach it. It cause it to become less negative. The actual number getting from the reading here is not much. Two and a half. Let's tune the radio and watch that vary. I think that's a, a good approach. Let's see how it changes. this time. Now, I thought before I determined that uh, hooking up the voltmeter to this point didn't affect the radio. Sure seems to now. Okay, let's be in the right spot. Five volt scale. That's the volume channel. So the behavior of the of this is not right at all. <laughs> Not supposed to do that. It should be going up and down, of course, with every signal we come across. It's going up as I tune across the band. And there's a little bit of regular action on top of that. What's happened here? What has happened here? Um, did I did I do something halfway and then forget? <laughs> That's just about every possible combination of wrongness. I can I can do it. I don't know that I did anything. Uh, this capacitor is not behaving correct. Uh, uh, that's just terribly unlikely. Super duper unlikely. Um, my soldering unsoldered something. Um, I've set up a short circuit somewhere and didn't notice it. A piece of wire fell in the radio and was trapped in there. I didn't see it. I think it's no to all those questions. Um, I look at everything over as carefully as I can, very quickly, to see if I can spot something dumb. I don't see anything dumb. So some coincident thing has happened. A, a tube has failed. No, I don't think that's causing this. We have scared the reason for the distorted output to the point where it's running now, running through the radio and trying its best to hide as I close in on it. Oh boy, I'm really, really stumped here. Um, I just don't even know where to start looking. Uh, I could carry on with the last two capacitors because I don't know what else to do. Let me turn this off before I forget. I don't like going forward when the radio is in a state like this. I mean, I'm just going to introduce another problem to it. Could it be having having put in a new capacitor, it has caused an old capacitor to behave differently.
because the circuit has misbalanced differently. Something's happened. I've, I've done something that's. I mean, you'd have to sort of accept the idea that two worn out parts are benefiting the radio. And if you remove one worn out part, put a new one in, the last lonely worn out part has now become a crisis. That, that's hard to believe. And it's possible. Uh, if you introduce a signal ground that wasn't effective before, and the radio was not behaving correct before, and now it is. And I'm just confusing what good is. Well, that's not very likely because we looked at the ABC voltage and it's not behaving properly. The radio is sensitive to tuning here in terms of the ABC voltage. It really shouldn't shouldn't be sensitive just, you know, as you tune across the dial, the ABC voltage climbs. That shouldn't be happening. That suggests an oscillation. Um, most of the time you become aware pretty quick that there's an oscillation in a radio, but I guess not all the time. The ABC voltage never went down, stayed fairly high. So what would cause that? The voltage has to come from somewhere. Assuming it's coming in the normal way, it's because of a, uh, uh, um, a rectification of the output of the IF. Could it be that uh, I disturb the alignment of the radio? So in the sense that with the bad parts the radio was aligned suitably for the bad parts and as I'm putting in the new parts the bad alignment no longer helps the radio. The alignment has to be made good again. Nah. You'd have to come back to well, where's this voltage coming from? From an alignment. And basically bad alignment means no ABC voltage. Something coming out of the IF that shouldn't be coming out. So for, for some reason, there's an oscillation in the IF circuits. I installed a capacitor in the wrong place. It's the only one I've done. It's supposed to run between B- minus and the chassis. I can see it with my own eyeballs. That's what it's doing. Oscillation in the uh, IF circuits, or an oscillation in the very front end of the radio. So, so an oscillation in the very front end can't really get through unless somehow it's generating a 455 signal, 455 kilohertz. You wouldn't expect tuning across. The tuning only affects the very front end of the radio. So it, it affects what's being fed into the IF. And it would affect what's coming out. The oscillation in the front end of some sort. Generally, I think if you manage to get a accidental signal into the IF somehow, it's going to heterodyne with the tuned signals coming from the antenna. And you're going to get a, a howl, you know, a pitch Howl that's going to go up and down as you tune through stations, showing you that there's the maybe the IF itself is oscillating. So it, it's oscillating away at say 456 for some reason. As you tune through a station and a new 455 uh, comes in, like, uh, as you tune in, you know. 453, 454, 455. Make would mix with the accidental signal, you get a thousand hertz tone, and as you tune through, you get that woo sound. Don't hear that at all. The leak onto the AVC circuit through something. Failure, coincidental failure of, a, of the AVC resistors. Um, I haven't touched the soldering on either end or anywhere. 
and I, I did. So this this capacitor here is right right on that point. So the other end of this tubular capacitor is onto this ground point. So. Uh, well, well, what, what could that possibly do? Um, so I put this kind of strange kind of capacitor in here. Uh, how it's constructed inside, I don't know. Is it, is it two plates like this? Or is it a coiled up stuff? Does this thing become some kind of antenna? How, how can it be? Well, it could, it could. Um, if the chassis involved in this thing, then doing this kind of stuff should have a pretty strong impact on that voltage because you'd be changing the dynamics here. Okay, sounds stupid, but let's try that. What happens when you touch the chassis or extend the, the chassis? Back on. Okay, I put them, and I clip this back on. Well, here, let's listen. Let's walk, oh, oh, quick, get her on there. Get her on there, quick, Jim. Easy does it now. Don't, uh, don't do anything rash. Barely on there. Watch this. That looks normal. She goes. And it's cut back. It's just doing the same thing. Tune. Yeah, it, it's just... It, it's related to the capacitor. You know, that's a big hint. I'm just not not getting it. Okay, stick it here. Touch that chassis. I kind kind of was already. Nothing going on. Then I have to remove this capacitor and try a tubular one here. What if I put a shorted capacitor in there? What if this guy was shorted? Fat chance on that. Um, shorted or open? Shorted. Um, I don't know. I think I think I got to put a different capacitor here. I put the right size there. 0.05. 0.05. It's a total shot in the dark. I'll change that. Okay, we're going to kind of do a double test. This capacitor is now disconnected as much as it doesn't look like it. It is. It is free of the connection there. So we're going to operate the radio without this capacitor in, or any capacitor there to start with. And so the double test is finding out what happens when you don't uh, ground this back to the B minus, ground the chassis back. So you should not do two things at once, but we're gonna. Okay, not sure of the result. Here we go. volt scale here. This is actually uh, below zero. It's on the positive side. Oh, for crying out loud. Let's try plugging the radio in. That'll help. Safety procedure's gone awry. Okay, try it again. Let me turn it up a fair bit. Watch for this. Here it comes. Oh! <laughs> Thank you.
So now you see the chassis has, has become sensitized. All kinds of weirdness could happen. Who knows what? Well, I think I'm in the zone here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a tubular, standard sort of tubular capacitor in there. Thought I was being smart by putting that guy in. Oh well. Patient is suffering. Doctor's not sure what he's doing. Okay. Another coffee injection too. So before I put the capacitor in, I want to figure out which end of the new capacitor is the outside foil, which is always marked on these old capacitors. Like this band like this, which says outside foil. It's written right on it. Put the outside foil to the low impedance side of the circuit, which in this case would be to the chassis. So a capacitor like this would be easy. You know, that's the outside foil, so it would go that way. These ones, they are not marked. The new capacitors are not marked at all. So you see, I just hooked it up to my oscilloscope lead. Nothing special going on here. And then I'm going to try to inject a signal into the capacitor and see the result on the scope. My scope is set to its most sensitive setting here on AC, of course. So I will now inject the signal. So you see what's going on. Now that, now we're going to flip it around. the signal you don't see anything so this tells me the outside foil is connected to the ground wire right now there's there's a wee bit here a wee bit of course I'm getting it close to these wires and everything so that's the outside foil bender down when it was the other way around the outside foil was picking up more stuff from my fingers so there we are I think this might be important in this particular position, which is why I took the time to do that. Now I'm going to install this capacitor and uh, see if our weirdness goes away. Okay, new capacitor in. Plug the radio in. Here we go. Still good. DC negative. How to get up there so fast? lower voltage. Hmm, this is still not quite behaving right. It's not up where it was lower now. Radio sounds better. Volume's there. Where is the signal? Where is the station? It's way down here. It's not doing that drifting thing. So one of my thoughts here is uh, when I soldered in the uh, 
capacitor, the last one, that I, I actually created a cold solder joint on something. Uh, not very likely to have happened. Wait, the opposite is more likely to have happened, but I'd already soldered onto this terminal. Um, and the distortion is still there. Still, still sounds crappy. Is this ADC voltage reacting at all? Hmm. That's what I say about that. Uh, I would really think this should have been going over as I tune the radio through those rather powerful noise signals. I don't know what to say. Disconnect the meter and see if all the zero <laughs> and think there's something there. That's kind of silly. What's happening now? We can hear the, the hum from something. There goes that weird, weird interference thing. What the heck is that? I hear this all the time, right around this time of the morning. It, it strikes me it's some kind of uh, static electricity discharge. But it doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you had a, uh, like a Van de Graaff generator, you know, something that's building up lots of static, and you held a discharge ball or, or terminal up close to it, so it was sparking very rapidly, this is exactly what it would sound like. So it's snowing heavily outside right now. Uh, it's a little bit below zero. Is it possible this is happening to one of my antennas? They're not connected in here. Here's my antenna here. I can't, I can't imagine. Hooray! Ah, oh, diggity dog. Let's put this one back on here. Is this radio getting quieter and quieter as we sit here? How come that got louder just now? Oh my gosh, all kinds of stuff happening here. Is it this meter? Not a, <laughs> that's not that's not B minus there. Okay, pick another B minus point. Okay, a really good one. Bottom of these power transistors. Or power power transistors. Oh my gosh, what's happening to me? Capacitors here. I'm gonna go on to B minus of those capacitors. I can't I can't get that wrong. It's right here. It's very close to the plus though, so let's, let me go over here. Maybe, maybe I just booped it up when I uh, hooked up over here. I don't want to touch there. Don't touch there. What happened there? I've had almost every radio picks this sound up. It can't be the radio itself. It's 
this wire is getting close to something. What is it getting close to? So that's the volume of this sound going up and down. So I think I'm probably just injecting whatever that interference is just into the radio. Just by waving this wire around. Probably my hand coming up. Probably doing it. Okay, totally kind of losing track of what I'm trying to do. Measure the ABC with a different ground connection. There's that terrible word again. Not correct. Oh, 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 oh. What'd you do? I'm going to grab a portable radio and I'm going to go off and try to hunt down this sound. It's ticking while I can. No, 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 uh, no clicking. But it was clicking when I started. Clicking just like you heard out of here. I ran around my house with this. It, once again, I cannot identify any particular source, although it seems to be in the back part of my house, but I really couldn't, couldn't get close to anything at all. Uh, Pretty interesting. I got in my uh, room on the other side of my house where there's another computer with some screens, of course, and everything is off. As soon as I walked in there, I could tell quickly that one screen is just blasting out noise, even though it's off. But uh, that's not what we're hearing. The ticking slowed down, tick, 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 and stopped just before I put on the uh, video. Mysterious stuff. Um, house of noise. Boy, oh boy. And uh, now getting back to this situation, um, I turned off the video, and then afterwards I turned off the radio, and as the radio voltages dropped, the volume came up again. So whatever's going on, still going on in here. I don't know what to think. Defective tube. Maybe the situation's existed the whole time and I've never noticed it till now. You know, something like turning the power off and hearing the volume go up r really stands out. So I think if it were, if it had been going on, I would have noticed it. it continues to be a mystery. Just, just a real mystery here. Oh, I'm just changing capacitors and crying out loud. <laughs> Well, here's an observation here. Um, a snowstorm just went through for the last 20 minutes, half an hour or so, snowing quite heavily. This radar image is just a little bit out of date. See, it says 9.50, it's actually 10.30 now, so I'm gonna refresh this. This is where I am, right here in Aurelia, and this storm went through. Let me just refresh this now. We'll see where it actually is. Okay, so here's Aurelia. There's just a wee bit of snow falling out there now, but the bulk of it is gone. Now it's snowing quite heavily. What are the chances that the snow falling is creating a static charge on something? I've heard of this happening uh, on antennas. And I've seen an interesting demonstration a few years ago, um, I think done uh, by uh, Mr. Carlson. 
that he discovered his antenna was generating large static uh, voltages during a snowfall. I don't think my antennas are good enough to, uh, to build up a static voltage, but maybe they are. In his case, there were sparks flying. Well, not flying, but there, it was actually sparking over, so it was a, a few thousand volts for sure. So this radar is ending at 1020, so it's almost 40 minutes behind. So the, this storm has, has passed, and so has the clicking. Jeepers, is that what it is? Well, if, if we assume it's bad capacitors that are doing it, there's still two of them in here. Uh, there's this one, which I think is inconsequential because it's actually going nowhere. It's going to the phono terminal on the back of the radio. Going nowhere. This guy, though. That guy is this guy. Um, well, I'm going to change this and we'll just see what happens. Um, This would be, yeah, don't think about it. Let's change that, 0 0.025. Change it and see, just keep going. I gotta get rid of those capacitors anyway. Let's see what happens. Okay, did, did a number of things uh, here. Um, one is I, I reattached this so it's a little neater. There was a little piece of wire here, I got rid of it. There's the capacitor I installed there. I also took this wire, which was jointed a couple times through here, and took all that out and replaced it with a, a neater arrangement closer to the chassis. And I installed this capacitor here. So there's no more old dried up capacitors in here. Do I think this is going to help out with either the distortion or the strange behavior of the AVC? I can't see how, but all those things needed to be done. So let's get ready to try again. There. Touched up a couple solder jobs too, but again, I, I don't think it could have had any influence on what is going on here. had some tubes delivered to my house. Vacuum tubes. Okay. Let's give it a go. One more time. Here we go. Let's plug it in. Hook up the voltmeter here to the key spot. Okay, stand back. Here we go. Okay, dim bulbs behaving properly. Flying controls hidden here. What do we get this time? Just a second. Okay, great. My box of tubes has come. Uh -huh. Great. In there is a bright magic eye. It's going to go into the radio. Right here. It's waiting. Excellent. Get that done before Christmas. Hey, that'd be great. Now, what about this radio? So let's check the volume level and Keep an eye on that meter there. Volume. Pretty good. Tuning. Oh, what just happened there? That I didn't like that. Not 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 liking that. Not liking what just clicked. What what happened? Danger. Let's go back on the dim bulbs. No, dim bulbs are not bright. Boy, this radio, it just does not want to come along, does it? 
it's really got a mind of its own here. And, uh, son of a gun. Okay, so the area I did work in, I could have created a near short or something like that. Which then activated. Didn't like what I heard there. Oh my gosh. What could have happened? What could have just happened? Almost anything. Everybody was upside down. Even a, even a tube could have come out of its socket a little bit. That's fat, fat chance upon that. Who and what? Let me wiggle this guy here. Sometimes I forget to solder things. Not the case. A lap joint here. And that's where you lap the wires over each other. Sometimes that's going to be a cold joint. Howdy, 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 howdy. Well, everything looks fine. Let's switch it back on. Them bulbs. Happen. When the pop happened, this thing went up, if I remember right. Here we come. It's a quiet, quiet radio. Is it dirt on the volume? Now, now it wants to work. Watching this. Where are we here? What's all that popping? Uh, let's give it the stick treatment and call it a day. Okay, here's a good stick to use. Okay, tubes. Okay. Good. <laughs> we're going to call that good for now. We we'll call this a day, another day. Oh my gosh. There we are. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Another kind of crazy video in here. Not really sure of everything that happened, but that's kind of normal. <laughs> yeah, that's normal in life, isn't it? So, again, thanks for watching. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get in here again. It's getting pretty close to Christmas Day here. We'll, we'll see what happens.